This is the video summary for our paper identifying the molecular target sites for CFT potentiators GOPG1837 and VXM70. Cystic fibrosis, or CF, is a genetic disease caused by loss of function mutations in the chloride channel, cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, or CFTR. In CF patients, dysfunction of CFTR results in thick and sticky airway mucus, which leads to persistent lung infection and fibrosis that limits the patient's ability to breathe. In a subset of CF patients, the function of mutated CFTR can be partially restored by drugs known as CFTR potentiators. The CFTR potentiator VXM70, or IVAC after, developed by Vertex Pharmaceuticals, has improved these patients' life quality so much that Rebecca, shown in this picture, decided to tattoo its chemical structure on her foot to honor the drug that brings her son Brady a much-needed, healthier life. To further improve VX770 or design even better potentiators, researchers need to have a comprehensive understanding of how potentiators work and where these drugs bind. In a paper we published in the Journal of General Physiology in 2017, we demonstrated that CFTR potentiators increase CFTR activity through a classical allosteric modulation mechanism. In short, this theory posits that potentiators have a higher binding affinity for the open channels and a much lower affinity for closed channels. The difference in the binding energy can then be used to shift the equilibrium to favor the open channel conformation. This idea of state-dependent binding suffices to explain how CFTR potentiators work, but it predicts that mutations that alter CFTR gating can also alter the apparent affinity of the drug by shifting the distribution of the channels to the open state or to the closed state. Therefore, it is an arduous challenge to use mutational approach to identify the binding sites, because it's difficult to tell if the mutations affect drug binding directly or cause changes in gating which secondarily alter the apparent affinity. This is a precaution raised by David Cahoon in 1998. Nevertheless, equipped with a fundamental understanding of how CFTR potentiators work, and with the very precaution in mind, in this study, we aim to tackle this difficult but important question, where do the potentiators bind? We first combine molecular docking and patch clamp technique to identify the binding sites for VX770 and another CFTR potentiator, GOPG837, which in our previous report has been shown to share the same binding site with VXM70. Molecular docking identified five potential binding sites on the atomic structure of CFTR solved by Professor Ju Chin's lab at the Rockefeller University. We then introduced mutations at each site and tested if the mutations alter the apparent affinity of GLPG8037 calculated through simple dose-response relationships. We found that only mutations on the amino acids in Psi1 and Psi2N change the apparent affinity for GLPG1837. To give you an example, in Psi1, mutations on D924 cause a sidechain-specific driver shift of the dose-response curves marking a decrease in the apparent affinity for GLPG-1837 by the mutations. Similarly, in site 2 n mutations on Y304 decrease the apparent affinity for GLPG-1837. Collectively, our data suggests that all three amino acids in site one are involved in binding of GLPG-1837, while three out of five amino acids in site 2 n contribute to binding. Mutations on the other three sites predicted by docking, namely site 2, 3, and 4, do not significantly affect the dose-response relationships. Therefore, we conclude that only site 1 and site 2n 
are potential binding sites for GLPG 8037. We used a different approach to test the affinity for VXM70 due to technical reasons. Instead of dose response experiment, we measure the apparent on rate and off rate kinetics to measure the change in affinity for VXM70. A slower on rate or faster off rate suggests a decrease in the affinity. Our data demonstrate that mutations in Psi1 and Psi2n also affect the affinity for VXM70, supporting our previous proposition that GLPG1837 and VXM70 share the same binding sites. As described earlier, due to state-dependent binding, a change in the apparent affinity for the potentiators could result from difference in open probability, rather than a change in binding site structure. In other words, a shift in dose-response relationships or any change in the apparent on and off rates for mutations could be a result of changes in either binding affinity or open probability. As detailed in our report, after taking this potential caveat into consideration and examining the open probability of several mutations in both sites, we reached the conclusion that the observed change in apparent affinity cannot be fully explained by a simple change in open probability. Instead, it is likely that mutations indeed affect the binding of the potentiators. In summary, we narrow down the potential binding sites for VXM70 and GLPG1837 to two specific locations in the transmembrane domains of the CFTR protein. The amino acids involved in binding includes D924, N1138, and S1141 in Psi1, F312, F931, and Y304 in Psi2N. Interestingly, an important role of tyrosine 304 is further supported by the following experimental results. In mouse CFTR, the amino acid equivalent to human's tyrosine 304 is instead a phenylalanine. Several labs, including ours, show that mouse CFTR cannot be potentiated by VXM70 and GLPG1837. However, by replacing mouse 304 with tyrosine, we can restore the effect of VXM70 and GLPG1837. Future work along this line is expected to provide magnetic insights into the species difference in the action of these potentiators. In short, our studies have provided a comprehensive understanding on how and where CFTR potentiators work. We believe that this information can not only serve as a guide to study other reagents targeting CFTR, but also lay the foundation for future structure-based drug design.